Let's start off with the definitions of the Z spread and G spread, and then we'll go into Excel to really show how we can calculate this and understand intuitively these metrics. So the Z spreads, also known as a zero volatility spread. It's the constant spread that needs to be added to the spot rate curve to discount a bond's cash flows to match its current market price. Now the G spread, or the government spread, is just the difference between a bond's yield and the yield of a government benchmark bond with a similar maturity. Now let's dive into Excel to solve for these things. So let's look at an example where we have a corporate bond and a government bond with the same face value, coupon rate, and years to maturity. So both have four years outstanding. And then we also have this yield curve of spot rates, and we can assume that these are relatively risk-free spot rates. And we can see that this is an upward sloping yield curve where the yields at more near maturities are lower than the yields further off into the future. So we could go ahead and calculate the value of the cash flows of, let's say, this government bond at 5% coupons. So the cash flows for each year are just going to be equal to that coupon rate. I'm gonna lock it in with F4, multiplied by the face value, which I'll also lock in, enter. So we're gonna be getting a cash flow of $5 each year. We can drag this all the way to the right. And then in the final year, we're not just going to get the $5, but we'll also get the $100 face value. So how would we calculate the present value of these cash flows? Well, that's just gonna be equal to the cash flow itself, and then we have to discount it back to present value. So we would divide it by one plus the discount rate, which is just gonna be that spot rate of 2%, to the time to maturity, which is just one for this one. And then as we scroll right, we will start accounting for the new spot rates and the more distant time to maturities. So we calculate all of these present values. Now we can sum them up to get a present value for the whole bond. So let's sum all of these. That is going to be a value of $104.65. So I'll copy that and then I will paste the value. So using this yield curve, this government bond would be valued at $104.65. But what would this corporate bond be valued at, right? Well, we know that the market tells us, we just, let's say we went out into the observable market and we found that this bond was priced at 98.50. Well, the Z spread tells us how much would we have to shift this entire yield curve by to make sure that these spot rates once shifted, we'll discount our bond properly to give us the correct value of 98.50. So in order to account for this, we have to find a Z spread, which we can start off with 0%. And then we're gonna drive all the other Z spreads off this one. So I'm gonna set it equal to that, and then I'm gonna drag this formula to the right. So the other three are all driven off of this one, which is 0%. Now we can adjust our present value calculation to match this formula. So instead of just including the spot rate as we did before, we also have to add on to that discount rate, the Z spread. So let's add on the Z spread to our discount rate by adding here. There we go, and we can drag this right. Nothing's going to change because it's zero. Well, now we could go and find through an iterative process what is the actual Z spread that will set this bond's present value equal to 98.50. Well, we can start off and say, hey, maybe it's 1%. Uh, the spread wasn't high enough because the bond value's too high. Okay, maybe it was 2%. Oh, now I think the spread's too high because it made the bond value too low, it's not 98.50. So you could keep trying that, or you could use the solver function where you can go to data, and if you see solver, you're good. If not, you can right click over here, customize the ribbon. Then you can go to add-ins, Excel add-ins go, and then just make sure solver add-ins checked and hit okay, so we'll go to solver. So with solver, we're going to set our objective is we want that this value in H4 here, this bond present value, we want it to equal the value of what the market's observable price of the corporate bond is, which we know here is 98.50. So we have 98.50 there, and then we want to make that happen by changing the value of the Z spread, which is going to be cell C8. 
So let's hit solve. We'll hit OK. So we find that our Z spread is 1.703%. And that sets this bond's present value equal to the corporate bond's value. So now we can find our issuer yields by taking the spot rate plus the Z spread. So this is the real yield of the cash flow for the, ish, the credit risky issuer. So it'll be the Z spread plus the spot rate. And then we'll drag this all the way over. And now we'll see we have these two yield curves. This bottom one, the blue one, is really that more risk-free spot rates curve representing these rates. And then we add a Z spread to each of those spot rates to do a parallel shift of the curve upwards to really get the yield curve that is specific to this issuer. This credit risky issuer is going to have a higher yield curve because they're more risky, so you have to discount by greater values. So we found our Z spread value. Now we can find our G spread. So we have our corporate bond, we have our government bond. So now let's go ahead and we're going to have to figure out what is the yield to maturity for both bonds. So you could use your financial calculator. You have four of your five inputs, you just solve for the fifth, or I can use the rate function in Excel. So we'll do rate. Uh, number of periods is just this value n, so four. The payment is going to be equal to the coupon rate times the base value. For the present value, we have to make sure to make it negative, so it's gonna be negative 98.5. And then the future value is just this face value of 100. I'll hit enter. We find that we have a yield to maturity of 5.43%. Then we can drag this to the right. So the government yield to maturity is 3.73%. So this reflects really the difference is a credit spread between the two. And let's also point out that this one is priced at a discount, the corporate bond, right? Because the price is below the face value, which means the coupon rate should be below the yield to maturity. Whereas the government bonds price at a premium where its price is above the face value. So its coupon rate should be above the yield to maturity. Now the G spread is going to be equal to the corporate bonds yield minus the government bonds yield. So let's take the yield to maturity of the corporate bond, subtract the yield to maturity of the government bond, and we find that we have a G spread of 1.7% that overall represents the additional risk that an investor takes when they invest in this corporate bond. If you'd like to download this file for free, I'll provide a download link in both the description of this video and the comment that is pinned. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to subscribe for more just like it. Thank you.